I have Visual Studio open with the sample reports project loaded. This is the sample project that is included with the course that has all of the reports that I've worked with at various points. So it really doesn't matter which project I use for this, but this is one that already has these report elements installed on the local report server instance. And so it's really easy to show how you can make changes in order to implement data security. So I want to double click on one of the shared data sources. I'm going to use the AdventureWorks LT 2012 data source, which connects to the database of the same name. All right, so that opens the shared data source properties dialog box. Now, one thing that I could do is add credentials to the connection string directly. Please resist that temptation because that's not protected nearly as well as the other option that I'm going to show you. All right, so what you should do is go here to the credentials page and this gives you four different options for how you connect to the data source. So the Windows authentication option, which is integrated security, this works well if the database server where the data source lives and the report server where SQL Server Reporting Services lives are in the same box. You're precluded from using this option if the servers are in separate boxes, unless you're using the Kerberisk authentication. So that's getting to some esoteric security, network security kind of stuff that I'm not going to cover here. But that's one of the choices, and that's the default. Okay, So it works good for this project when I was creating the reports going against a local reporting services server. And more importantly, when the reports are accessing data that's on the same machine as the report server. Okay. Now the second option is that you can use a specific username and password. This is usually a better way to go unless you use Kubernetes or the data source and the report server are co-located on the same box. Okay, but you're going to have implemented a username and password on the server and then this report or reports using this data source will log in using that credential. So you have to do some security setup on the on the report server as well. The next option is to prompt for credentials. In this case, when the user executes a report that uses this data source to get its data, then reporting services prompts the user for credentials, username and password. So that's at execution time. Downside to this is that it exposes the username and password in clear text unless you've implemented SSL on the report server and made it required. And then the last option, probably one that you're not going to use all that often, is do not use credentials. This really is only going to be useful if the data source was not secured, which is going to be pretty rare. But it is common for desktop databases such as Microsoft Access, but it really is something you should generally avoid. Okay, so those are the four choices. So let's see how this works. I'm going to select this prompt for credentials option. And then that requires me to enter some text that will be displayed in the report to prompt the user to enter their credentials. Okay, so what I'm going to put in here is, hello, this is a very friendly data source. And then I'll say, please enter your login information. Okay, that's all I'm going to put. We can make it as fancy or as, as simple as we want. And I'll click on OK. OK, I'll save the changes. And now we need to deploy this to the server. But by default, data sources are not overwritten on the server. That's because they can contain sensitive information. And I may have already made changes on the report server to this. Now, by default, all reports will get redeployed. But what I need to do is come in here to Sample Reports in the Properties pages and change this overwrite data sources. As you can see, it indicates whether data source definitions in the report server can be overwritten when deploying the project. I've already deployed this project to the report server, but I'm going to redeploy it, and I made a change to the data source, so I'm going to double click on this to change it to true. Okay, now it'll overwrite that data source. 
Okay, so now we can deploy this project. And here's where we find out, I'm sorry, actually on the build menu, here's where we find out if I remembered to load Visual Studio and run it as an administrator. Okay, as you can see, the different RDS files are up to date, so it's not going to deploy them anew. We have a bit of a pause. Since nothing's happening, I strongly suggest that I forgot to start Visual Studio as an administrator. And there we go. Permissions granted to blah, blah, blah are insufficient for performing this operation. Easy to fix. Close out. Restart it as administrator. And open up sample reports again. And I can immediately just go in and deploy it. Now a lot more happens a lot more quickly. And as you can see, the data sets in the project were not deployed because I didn't change that property of the project. So I couldn't overwrite any existing data sets. Doesn't matter, I didn't make changes here. And now it's deploying all those reports because by default you can redeploy reports. And there we have success, up to date, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if I quickly go back up here, data sources, data source, deploying data sources. Okay, so we deployed all three of those data sources that are defined within the project. Okay, we're good to go. So now I'm going to go back over here to Report Manager that I already have open, and I'll go into Sample Reports, and now I want to run a report that uses that AdventureWorks LT 2012 database. A little bit of a pause. Okay, there's my list of reports. One of the ones that does is this customer address list. And I know that because I just went back into that sample reports project and searched on that data source name and found a report that used it. Okay, so I'll click on it. And now, before it displays the report, it displays that prompt, hello, please enter your login information and then I need to enter my login name and my password. All right, so now this report is protected, requiring the user to prompt because it uses that data source. Any reports that don't use that AdventureWorks LT2012 data source are gonna run just fine, aren't gonna present the user with this prompt. Okay, that shows how easy it is to change the kind of authentication that is happening for a data source. Okay, now we really need to talk a little bit about how credentials are stored, particularly in the case where you want to use a specific username and password in order to access the data for a report. So when you save a data source with embedded credentials within a Visual Studio project, then the username and password are stored in encrypted format in the project name rptproj.user file. The encryption algorithm is tied to the machine on which it was created, so your local development machine. So if you ever copy the data source to another machine, another development machine, then you're going to have to recreate those credentials. So just keep that in mind. So it's stored securely, but at development time it can be a little bit inconvenient. Okay, but then the other thing is that when you deploy your reports and data sources to a report server, the credentials are stored as rows in the data source table of the report server database. And then the credentials are kept in an encrypted state whose key was created when the reporting services server was configured. So that's a, a, a set of credentials that are tied to the specific instance of reporting services. Okay, so let's also talk about which SQL Server permissions are needed for a report. Regardless of whether a data source employs a Windows account or a SQL Server account, the runtime account under which reporting services connects to SQL Server will require a certain level of permissions. Again, this isn't the permissions to run the report. This is the permissions that the reporting services is going to need to use in order to access the data within the database engine. Now, if the data sets in the report use ad hoc SQL, the runtime account is going to require either 
explicit read permissions to the tables and other objects that the query references, or membership in a database role or server role that confers the account the equivalent permissions to read that data, those specific tables and so forth. And membership in the built-in DB data reader role usually works nicely in many situations. It's kind of a, a, a bit over-encompassing because that database role gives access to all tables in the database. And that's probably too much for, well, if you want to implement the, the principle of least privilege, that's conferring too many permissions. But it is an option that you can use. And then, if the data sets in the report use stored procedures, then the runtime account requires either explicit execute permission to the stored procedures that it calls, or, again, membership in a database role or server role that confers the account the equivalent permissions to execute those stored procedures. And also keep in mind, if that ad hoc SQL or stored procedures access user-defined functions or views, there may be additional permissions that you have to account for that may be required. And when considering which runtime permissions are needed to successfully run a report, don't forget the permissions for any data sets used to supply parameter drop-down lists. For example, the reseller cumulative sales report not only uses a query in order to access data for the report itself, there are three parameters when it initially loads the report it uses queries, separate queries, in order to get a list of valid parameter values. Okay, so you need to, to have permissions on those queries as well. And another thing, the context in which I've been describing this whole security scheme really assumes that the data for the report is stored in a SQL Server database. If that's not the case, it's in some other kind of data store, then you'll need to consider the security scheme employed by that data store that you're using for the report data. And there's a lot of them, and you can access an awful lot of different data stores using your reports. All right, now let's talk about managing data source security from Report Manager. The scenario here is we've already deployed our reports and all the data sources, data sets, whatever we need for this, this report project. We've deployed them to a report server. And again, I'm going to use the sample reports that is included with the course's sa sample files. Now, you can create, update, and delete data sources from Report Manager. So if I come back over to the Home folder here and go into the Data Sources folder, you can see that through that sample reports project that I deployed to this instance of reporting services, there's three different data sources including that AdventureWorks LT 2012 data source that I modified in SQL Server Data Tools in Visual Studio and then deployed to the report server. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the properties. I can just click that link directly. And as you can see, this data source requires credentials supplied by the user running the report. This is not the original setting for this data source in the sample reports project as I created it. But I changed that in the project and deployed it anew, and so that's now how this data source acts. And if I scroll down here a little bit, you can see that I have the same four selections as I had when configuring the data source in SQL Server Data Tools. Credentials supplied by the user running the report, including the prompt, Credentials stored securely in the report server, different, slightly different names, but here I would need to specify a, a particular username and password. And then there's a couple options for using Windows credentials when connecting to this data source, additional layer of security. Or I can use Windows integrated security, which again is the default. And then credentials are not required. And I can test the connection for some of these options. Now I want to change this back to its original setting, Windows Integrated Security. I can test the connection, make sure that I can in fact connect to the data store, and I can. If I couldn't, I'd get a red error message. All right, so I'm going to apply that change, and then I'll come back up here and go to the sample reports and the customer address list, 
Remember, this is a report that uses the AdventureWorks LT 2012 data store and the backend database. And now, instead of being prompted for credentials, the report directly runs because my Windows login is valid for accessing the data. That's passed on through the report to access the data, and I get the report. So it really is nice when changes like this take immediate effect.